Thank you, uh, Rob, very, very much. We are indeed privileged to have the board we do, and in fact, to even have the governance structure that we do that's represented by the meeting we're having today, once a year, AGM in the way um, any other uh, corporation would. It's a governance structure that works, that keeps us um, highly accountable uh, financially and in, in every other way. But we're just incredibly fortunate to attract the uh, quality of the board members that we do to give their time freely. And um, it's certainly no free ticket on our board to a, uh, a, a nice, relaxed time, uh, you know, looking at something outside of their normal realm of expertise. Um, we've, we've heard from Rob, and you can tell even from, from um, what he, he has said, his own personal passion and commitment for the Institute, and I can tell you that corresponds to an awful amount of time and angst over more than a decade um, from way before uh, Rob was chairman. Um, uh, and, uh, and of course to many others he spoke of, Helen, uh, who's also put in, only been on the board um, uh, in the last year, has already put an enormous amount in and has given uh, this Institute a great gift, in fact, in the uh, the external review, or largely external review, um, that she led. So we're ex extremely fortunate to have the board. Um, Rob specifically brings a um, an expertise that we don't have much of that is perfectly suited to this organisation. Rob was founded and uh, run as a CEO and then as chairman, a company that went from something very small to, to now something very, very large. Um, so while we have a lot of uh, uh, people on our board who are stellar in their own uh, worlds, uh, actually someone who's built a business from the ground up is a rare thing. Uh, and we're extremely lucky to have such a person, not just on our board, but chairing it. Uh, in a way, trying to see what parallels there are, and there are plenty for us in our own organisation than there was for Rob in his uh, construction company. So thank you to Rob and thank you to uh, the board and thank you to the members whose uh, meeting I'm addressing uh, today. Before, a few words of thanks, which is really what I wanted to do today. I might just follow on from what Rob was talking about with respect to, to change. You know, this is our once in a five year opportunity and I guess there's no reason to uh, to do it every five years, but we have been doing it each five years to have a really serious look at things externally and internally, and um, and do what's necessary to, um, to to reset. And it's a really exciting, slightly scary thing to do, um, but but you know I've certainly reached the stage where I'm much more excited than I am uh, afraid of it. We have. It's a pretty close to a year-long process where um, it will take before whatever we do is, is fully operational. Um, and, the, and the reasons are that there's a few things to consider. Um, the first is one that perhaps Rob has touched on just a little bit, and that's addressing whether what we're doing is still um, optimal. Are we, is this the most competitively advantageous niche that we can possibly occupy? You know, we're only interested in making the biggest difference we can toward um, our mission. We're not interested in just doing things for, this, for the sake of it. What and where and how can we make uh, the, the biggest contribution? And I think, as Rob's already mentioned, to a very large extent, we've been given the general answer to that, that we are in the right space. Burnett is in the right space. That call we took five years ago to adopt that mission to focus solely on poor, marginalised and otherwise vulnerable communities here in Australia and, uh, and, and internationally um, is the right call, has been the right call. And that's what our external stakeholders have thought as well as uh, internally, our own staff, board, supporters, and, and those who uh, have a lot to do with the Burnett have thought. 
But we want to continue to look at that uh, question with a bit of a hard edge. You know, exactly what is our niche? Just what should be our set of priorities? Um, what should we focus on above other things? Now, these are things we talk about constantly as an executive and as a staff and as a board, but we, we are going through a process of really thinking hard about our strengths and concentrating um, on those. And, uh, and so that's you know, the first and most important consideration uh, in, uh, with respect to the next five-year strategic plan. Where can we make the most difference? What questions should we ask? How can we measure ourselves against the goals that we set? And the second consideration Rob's uh, really gone into in some detail, and that is uh, what are we, you know, as, uh, as an organisation, where are we going strongly and where have we got room for improvement? Where do you, especially as a staff body, think we have um, room for improvement? And the, the theme groups that uh, have just completed their task, Helen and her reviews just completed uh, their task, a couple of other reviews that Rob has mentioned, is looking really hard at those issues. And so they're going to come together, the, the sort of uh, this analysis of where we as an organisation with all external considerations thought about uh, best sit with um, how we can best align the Institute and all our resources to meet those goals, um, all things considered. That's why it, it takes a while and to have um, as many people as possible, preferably everyone feeling like they've um, got had some say and and feel uh, very much a part of that, that process. At the moment we've largely gathered the information we want and we are um, working through, as Rob said, those, those uh, various consultation sessions. Um, uh, sometime in July or so the, the executive will go away on a retreat and, uh, and we'll really try to uh, put all that together in a, uh, in a new plan for the Institute. Um, and then, of course, the reason it takes to the end of the year is we have to we have to come up with perhaps the hardest bit, and that is a, a plan to implement that and monitor it effectively over the coming uh, years. So it is a really exciting uh, time. We have received, in many respects, a big um, tick of approval, um, and also been presented with some significant uh, challenges to uh, to do better. And uh, we're going to meet those. <coughs> Uh, really, really head on. So thanks, Rob, for speaking about that in uh, in some detail. The reason, um, the principal reason we're here, of course, is to look back, in fact, at 2015, and um, and to launch these, which you've all got, um, the financial uh, report for 2015. We work on the calendar year, and of course, uh, our annual report, our report of um, of product of our research and public health um, uh, activities. And, uh, you know, this is a really impressive uh, read. It's thank you very much to Paul, Tracy, especially, and the team for putting together such a beautiful document that does justice to what's in it, um, which is, uh, you know, a description, a summary, really, of of the highlights, by no means everything the Institute does, but of the highlights and breadth and scale of achievement and activity. Um, and, and it's uh, that that we're here to, to acknowledge. This is our, our real currency. Obviously, we have a financial side to the Institute. We're uh, a not-for-profit Institute, or as so someone told me in Columbia, I'm never to refer to that. I'm supposed to refer to the Institute as a for-benefit Institute as opposed to uh, not-for-profit. Anyway, we're obviously a not-for-profit organisation. We do care about balancing the books and we do care about, in fact, generating as much revenue as we can, of course, as most, and spending it as most efficiently as we can because we can get more done that way. But the principal uh, dividend is what's in here uh, uh, with, the, with the red writing and uh, everybody's activities in laboratories, in HIV, in TB, in malaria, in, in uh, new diagnostic tests, in vaccines, in new therapies, in fact, um, uh, uh, for some of those diseases and, and more generally for autoimmune disease and so on. Um, for our work in the, 
in, in the field, especially uh, uh, here in Australia that Rob didn't talk about much. There's some incredibly exciting uh, interactions with uh, uh, the corporate world, in fact, in the hep in hepatitis C space in more recent times as we get uh, closer thanks to these new um, uh, incredibly exciting drugs uh, that are available for hepatitis C, closer to the idea that something can actually be done about this, at least in the developed world, um, about this incredibly uh, deep, uh, un uh, perhaps unknown to many people, but incredibly deep problem in our, in our community. And what's happening there, which mixes our capacity to, uh, to track and interact with the most at-risk group of hepatitis C infection, in this state at least, um, and bring uh, therapeutic approaches to those people in a very clever way is a, is a great um, step forward for this institute. You'll be hearing a lot more about that. Very great step forward for uh, hepatitis C in Australia and in the developed world. Um, there's much more that's happening in the Australian context uh, uh, with drugs and alcohol at risk communities such as young people and uh, uh, those in prisons and so on. Um, it's a really uh, impressive list of achievements and current activities that you'll see in this report. And of course, as Rob's referred to in some detail, the work we do uh, internationally in related areas to those that, uh, that I've already mentioned, um, but often with a more generalised development goal. You know, um, our international work really embodies what our institute-wide sensibility and theme um, and value structure is, and that, that's, you know, it's, its primary motive is much more to do with the development of humanity generally. Um, uh, helping those who are the poorest of the poor um, reach a point where they have uh, a, an opportunity in life. Um, not necessarily an equal opportunity because it can be unrealistic um, in the short term, but an opportunity, a fair and reasonable opportunity, is very much what drives those who work on the poorest of the poor. And our work internationally and, and our work locally on the most neglected and vulnerable communities um, does great justice to that. We work, of course, through health. And the reason for that, apart from being our expertise, is that the development of humanity has been underpinned by improvements in health. It's why we have the life expectancy increase we have. Um, it's what was a precursor to the generation of increased wealth and greater equality. Um, and it wasn't just health that did it, but it was a focus on innovation, innovations in health and the delivery of those innovations to, uh, to people. And that um, it effectively embodies the position that uh, that we have at the Burnett that we think is unique. The organisation has, for the last five years, focused very much on on research and its delivery to uh, people who need it. You know, and the latter bit sounds um, automatic, I guess. You, know, okay, you do some research, you come up with something new, and of course that gets adopted by those implementing health change. But actually it doesn't a lot of the time, or it's very slow to. All the research never gets done or tagged to the, inter uh, in, um, uh, the intervention in the first place. And so Burnett's really unique position is in not just doing the research, although doing the research itself is very important to us, but it's really doing the research in a way that brings it closer to actually making a health impact. Um, for those who aren't in the game, as I say, that might sound really obvious, but there's, it's nowhere near done well enough globally, and it's the unique position that the Burnett has to offer, being sitting so comfortably 
right from the discovery end of research through to the development end that uh, Rob's spoken about, such as the activities in PNG in Myanmar uh, that we, uh, we visited in the last year. Very few agencies, in fact, I know of no other globally that sits so comfortably in that extreme of those spaces. We're really well positioned to bridge that gap between the research and its implementation. And as Rob said, we're going to have to, to meet the challenges even in this country, let alone uh, the, the, the global challenges through the new goals that have just been set. Um, we have absolutely no chance of meeting those health needs uh, without research and innovation not just being done, but being translated and embedded into the culture of how the health interventions are actually delivered. And so that's our, that's our niche. And we will be spending some months now um, sharpening uh, that focus on just how we can make the most difference um, in, in what, you know, the euphemism, in, euphemism is translation, both of the stuff we do in the labs through the stuff that's done in the field locally um, and internationally. We want to be a part of, um, of bridging that gap, and it's a very real uh, gap that exists. So there are many people to, uh, to thank, but there's four people I'd like to actually ask to stand at the moment. I'm looking at two of them, David, Margaret, Robert, and James, and there's two reasons I'm asking them to stand. Can you please stand up? Uh, where, where, where? Oh, there's Robert. So these four um, people, um, I don't think have ever been in the same room as me before. So that's the first reason I asked them to stand. Um, no, it is, actually, they have. But it's very rare. That we're, it's, very, it's very rare that we're together. Everything you see in here, um, from a research and public health point of view, uh, happen as a result of these four people and their teams. Um, and I'm incredibly grateful to the four of you, to your um, uh, deputies, James, to Heidi, if she's uh, here, to Robert, Mark Tennant, um, to Paul Dietz, um, and, and their broader teams. It's a uh, really uh, incredible effort, often done very much on a shoestring. Uh, uh, well, I can, I can absolutely assure you that they enter every year not knowing exact, quite exactly how they're going to make um, all the pieces fit together. I congratulate you and thank you for your uh, achievements, but more for um, being so committed to that Burnett um, ethos um, and mission that I've just been speaking about. You're passionate Burnett people, and uh, uh, that's how you make it work. That's how you bring together uh, the very small amount of money to make a very big difference each year and, um, and I'm very grateful uh, for that. That's how we deliver actual programs. Uh, of course we have then quite a significant um, operational side to the Institute that has to manage the money and, uh, and the human resources and the safety and the facilities and so on and so forth, and uh, uh, Jeff, I don't think is here, but uh, Jeff Drenkhan, Peter Spiller and their teams um, deliver that, and they are every bit, and they and their teams, every bit as passionate and committed to Burnett and, uh, and what we stand for as, uh, as those who actually run the programs, and uh, thank you very much uh, to you and your teams for that. And then there's sort of a third group that overlaps with um, with that one, but it is, it is distinct. Uh, I've referred to Paul and uh, Rathbone and Tracy already, uh, to the fundraising and PR team that um, uh, operates for us all, really, uh, trying to capture what we do and uh, digest it in a way that, that the community can understand and, uh, and the support then follows. It's an absolutely crucial role, and I, and I know from uh, a lot of hours working together that you share the same passion, um, uh, very much drive that passion, in fact. Uh, and so thank you to you and, and, and your team. It was a really marvellous uh, year for outcomes. Um, we, we want to do much more than just continue that. 
as I think you've got a sense from what Rob and I um, have been uh, speaking about, this is a year uh, not to to uh, say in any way, shape, or form that uh, that things have uh, have not been going as well as expected. I, I re they really surpassed um, my dreams eight years ago of where we've got to, and to have such a clarified sense of purpose and mission as we do now, um, I do actually feel very good about, very proud of, and I hope uh, I do so on behalf of everyone who works at the Institute. Um, but as Rob said, we just, we just don't st sit still, we can't sit still, not just to respond to the challenges, we're always going to face headwinds, um, but to actually do uh, a lot more, there's tremendous scope for us to expand um, our impact uh, and for us to do an even better job. And I call on all of you to join with Rob and the board and myself, the leaders who I've introduced today, um, to, uh, to have us reset and focus on an exciting um, uh, future together. Thank you to everybody, especially to the supporters who are outside of the Burnett um, who are in this room today. Thank you for your uh, support of the organisation and uh, I look forward to 12 months' time in talking about uh, um, uh, where we're at, the new institute that is taking shape and how that's going to deliver even greater things for those who we care about. Thank you.